right, so guys, what we're going to talk about today is what's new in Totora 12. Um, there is a lot of stuff that is new in Totora 12, but we're just going to kind of touch on some of the basics today. Um, in our future sessions ongoing, you're going to see uh, quite a few new features showcased. We're just going to kind of show really kind of high level stuff today, um, but our, our next several uh, series is here, we're going to cover pretty much things in depth on Totora 12. So that's where we're going. Don't get in a hurry to go upgrade. Um, it was just released back in December, so I believe it was released on December 12th. Um, we here at Kineo, we are just now kind of getting up to speed and figuring out the ins and outs of it. So there's no rush at all to jump into upgrade mode at this point. We would like to see you uh, think about upgrading to 11. I know several of you are already there as far as the 11 upgrade, which is great. But again, don't get in a tizzy on upgrading to 12 at this point because we are also just now getting up to speed too. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Assuming I can get my slideshow to go away. And let's look from a user's perspective. So we're going to start out looking at it from a user's perspective. And we're going to utilize a user tour to really just kind of step through and walk through the different things that we um, have that are new. So for those of you who maybe aren't aware, uh, user tours were actually added back in version 11. So we're going to use that new feature to kind of jump around this screen and see the new things that are available. So the menu and navigation bar back prior to even version 9, there were some things that were added. So we had audience-based visibility added to the main menu. Um, and then also you had the ability to add additional header items up there across the top. So that was something that was added. That was back way a long time ago in version 9. One thing to point out that is going to be new to version 12, including this menu bar, is that they're calling this, you'll see it referenced in documentation, as the top navigation bar. Um, quite a few things that we'll also talk about from the administrator's point of view with this particular top menu navigation bar. Um, but also, just kind of an aside, it's referred to as the top menu navigation bar but it is still edited in the same location underneath appearance and main menu. Okay, so they didn't change the name of it in the actual configuration, um, but the documentation does kind of uh, allude to a new name. Okay, the last course access block, this is an oldie but a goodie. It was added in version 9. The current learning block, this was also added in version 9. You'll notice I'm highlighting things that were added in previous versions as well as 12. This is new to version 10. For those of you who are aware, um, at Kineo, we went from version 9 straight to 11. We actually skipped version 10. Um, so there's some things that you may not realize that you have access to in version 11, because I don't know that we actually did a whole what's new to version 11 um, session like this. So kind of wanting to backtrack and make sure we cover all of that. But you have the ability now to receive audience membership badges. And also, you can get a badge for completing a program. Now, audience membership badge, that kind of sounds like, ooh, big whoop, why would I use that? You wouldn't necessarily use it like I've used it here, where it's like, ooh, look at you, you're a member of an audience. You wouldn't use it for that. Um, typically, what you're going to use that for is when you are pushing people into a new audience based off of their completion of something else. Because they don't really know they're in those audiences. But you may want to award them a badge for maybe completing two or three programs. If I complete these two programs, it might push me into another audience um, where I see two or three more programs. Kind of when you're thinking about doing things like dripping learning to people, that would be an example of why you might use that badge. Um, program completion, I think that was pretty self-explanatory. Used to, you would, had to do it based on a series of courses, and you had to know all the courses that were inside that program um, in order to create that badge uh, criteria. Now it's just a whole lot easier. You go in and you say, I would like to do it for this program. So just made that a bit easier for you. This is the biggie to me as far as blocks and things that have been changed. The featured links block, this was something that was added in version 10. It was improved upon in version 11. 
and it has been even more greatly improved upon in version 12. Um, so the featured links block allows you to do a lot of stuff. I think it's actually a really cool block. When I first saw it, I was kind of skeptical. Um, but after seeing it in 12, I really, really like it. I can see it being used for marketing. I can see it being used to push people to other places on your site. I can see it being used to push to people other places on your website versus just your LMS. So it has a lot of potential there. Um, you can set static URLs, so basically sending them to a static link, um, by going, and that can be internal or external. It has just a quick reference for adding a featured course, so you can do that really easily. You can also add a featured program really easily. We're going to talk a little bit more about this block. This is the enhanced gallery display. So there's one, I think it's in like maybe version, maybe version 11 where it's just gallery display. Um, now in version 12, you have what is called the enhanced gallery display. Essentially what that allows you to do is it allows you to add multiple pieces of content to one little location, one little area. Now the way I have this particular featured links block set up is I have, um, I have, it's using large tiles, but you can do lots of different sizes and I believe you can do squares or rectangles. So you can kind of make it fit your style as well. But for the enhanced gallery display, you'll notice that it is shifting between several different links that I've put in there with several different icons. It does now also have a really large icon um, library that you can pick from. All of these were just in there, the, the icons that, I'm pick, that are there. Um, and then also you can put your own icons in, which is nice. So this is really cool. Also, another thing that the enhanced gallery display allows for Mine, I have it just all automatically fil filtering through those, but you can put um, uh, operators basically where people can click backwards and forwards. Um, it'll put the little dots across the bottom where they can tell where they are and they can see how many different things that they can click through. Um, so you do have the ability to add, you'll see here, the arrows on either side. I didn't put the dots, but you have the ability to turn that off and on. So that's something that you have access to now. Also, for the featured course blocks, or if you're just providing a link to a course, whatever you're doing there, if I am enrolled in that course, and if that course is tracking completion, I can now see that progress display bar. So that was added, I believe, in version 11. They added that bar there so that you can track that, excuse me, and you can see that as you progress through. Another thing I want to point out, you'll notice that that says 42%. Um, for those of you who've been using Totoro for a long time, you're probably aware that um, sometimes the, that calculation looks a little weird. Um, it goes from 0 to 50 to 100%, and that's, that's it. Um, and you're, you're expecting a really good calculation. This was fixed in um, version 11 or 12. I can't remember exactly, um, but I've seen it. You know what, I've seen it in 11, so I believe this is fixed in 11, where they improved the calculation behind activity completion in courses. So if you have 10 activities in a course and you complete one, it's going to show you 10% complete, um, and two, so on and so forth, 20%, 30%. But in this particular case, I intentionally put like 11 activities in a course and then completed, completed an odd number so that you could actually see that it is doing an excellent um, calculation now, which is fabulous. However, that is only for courses at this time. They have not done that for programs yet. Um, so just keep that in mind. Programs are still going to do the 0, 50, 100. Um, but courses are now calculating wonderfully. But I think it is on their roadmap because I've uh, talked to their developers about that. Okay, so a few things have changed from the administrative point of view, and I've got to turn editing on to do that. But before I do that, I want to show you one more thing. Notice how up here I have in parentheses added in V9, added in V9, uh, added in V10, improved in V12. You now have the ability inside blocks to check a box and edit the header, which is fabulous. Used to, you had to do that by going and hunting down the language string and all of that good stuff. Um, not anymore. You now have the ability to just check that box and there you go. You can change it to be whatever you want it to be. 
Also, if you check the box and leave it blank, it will just get rid of the header, which is even better. So that's really a nice feature as well. So let's switch over to administrative view. And we're going to look at a couple things. When I get in that dashboard, we're going to edit that dashboard because I want to show you quite a few things. Okay, a couple of things to note here. First big, huge admin change is the administrative menu. All of you who have been using Totoro for quite some time are aware that used to you had your site administration, big long list menu, okay? That is no more. Now we have this menu. Now there's nothing wrong with it. I like it a lot and I think it'll be wonderful for um, ongoing continuous uh, maintenance and administrative upkeep of a site, mainly because of this. So underneath menu settings, you can check this, click this link, and then you can configure this menu to hold what you want it to hold. It is admin specific. So if there are three or four admins on your site, you can configure this menu to look how you want it to look and to have the links to the things that you use the most often. Um, which is a wonderful, wonderful feature. You can rename whatever you want to call them, okay, and it basically just links you straight in. Um, adding new menu items, pretty simple to do. You just go in, like in audiences, I may want to add that in here. There you go, pops it right in. So I can rename that, I can delete things, I can move things around. Okay, I can also add additional groups, I can rename the groups that they have, so if you don't particularly like the naming scheme, you can change that to fit you as well. So just something to keep in mind that you have the ability to do, you can uh, reorder these as well. So really a nice feature, um, and then you also have the ability to search for things. That is still there, this has not changed. So if you just type in the word user, it's gonna pull back every single word, any setting it has that is related to users. So that's still there. Um, so be aware that if you absolutely can't find something using that new menu, it is in a handy dandy location right up here in the upper right hand corner. So that's something to keep in mind. Now let's jump in and take a look at that dashboard again. So some things to point out as far as administrative features. You now have a quick add a block feature and capability. Anywhere where you see one of these green plus signs, gives you the ability to add blocks, which is super duper. You can do it here. Also, if you're noticing, this is in the middle. Okay, so we have the ability to do this, show you how fast you can add one in. I love that feature because the other day I actually couldn't find the random glossary entry block. I needed it, um, and I was looking for glossary block. Um, and I was like, well, it's, gosh, I guess they got rid of it. No, they didn't get rid of it, it's just, called random glossary entry and I didn't remember that word random. So something to keep in mind there. So really quick adding of blocks. You still have of course your drag and drop options. Um, if we go out to the front page, you can now add blocks in the center, which is lovely. Um, you used to not be able to do that. Um, you couldn't add blocks in this center region on the front page. You can now do that, which is wonderful. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. They refer to this block location here as header blocks. They refer to this block location as footer blocks. Um, to me, that's not exactly the best description of them because I think of this as my footer, not this. It's above the footer, but I get where they're going with it. So keep that in mind. One thing to also keep in mind and consider is going to be your theme. Um, so I would hope that our theme interfaces should also have the same block regions, but just be aware that that could be something that might impact you. Um, if you have a really custom theme, if you have some custom theme work done, just be aware that sometimes those block regions, we may have to add them in, there may be some things there. So that's another reason why I'm saying don't get all upgrade crazy um, because we want to make sure that we evaluate your site, evaluate the features that are on your site, um, and then evaluate Totora 12 and evaluate the best path forward to do that upgrade. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. If we go in here and take a look at a course, 
That's the other big thing we're looking at here, but we're coming back to that. Let me get in this course so I can see it. Okay, you also have this add block feature at the top of the course page. You have it at the bottom of the course page. You have it on the left and the right as well. So you don't get the center block location, but you do get a top and a bottom in the course, which is nice. Okay, let's go look at that catalog that you saw the sneak peek of. This is the new catalog interface. Um, it does not necessarily replace the enhanced catalog that you're all aware of and familiar with. The enhanced catalog is still there. It is just now a setting. Um, so if you want to go back to that view, you absolutely can. So you're not going to lose that view. But this is now the default. Uh, there's a couple of ways to manage it. You have the block view and then you have a list view. So you can choose to show this in a list view. If you click, then it's going to show you progress display course, go to the course, let you know if you're enrolled in the course, and then your enrollment method if you have one on there. Okay, same for the block view. Okay, you're already enrolled in the course, go to the course. Okay, here's a little description about the course. You'll notice that we have tags in here on this course, so we're using tags. We're also using custom uh, course fields, so we're able to see those on the little block here. This is a really cool feature that we have custom added to a lot of client sites. We call it targeted URL. Um, I'm not, I guess they're calling it share, um, but it's very similar to targeted URL. So if you filter your list, it is going to give you a filtered URL. You can copy that link to the clipboard and then you can now pass that. So this is now a core feature, um, which is something that uh, we've been building for clients for quite some time. Okay, now one thing to be aware of with this catalog, it is no longer an embedded report. Um, so in the past, the enhanced catalog was an embedded report, um, which made it really highly configurable. It doesn't mean that this isn't configurable anymore. It is still quite configurable. As you can see, we still have one, two, three, four, five, six tabs worth of configurations that you can do. Um, but probably one of the, in my opinion, loss of functionality that we're going to see here is that we don't have the ability to duplicate the report anymore. So we can't duplicate that report source like we might have done for the um, enhanced catalog. But I have a meeting with Todora this afternoon, so I intend to ask for the ability to duplicate, which, because I personally am currently up against something where um, I could use the capability to duplicate that catalog screen. So um, something to keep in mind, I don't think that that's going to limit or hinder any of our clients at this point. So you can set up the templates for it as far as how it's going to show, what is it going to show. Um, is it going to show the title? What is the additional hero data, the description? Any additional text fields, if you have any, which ones is it going to show? Um, as well as any additional details that you want, and then also filters. So you can add all the different filters that you would like to have um, in there as well. You can also rename those headings um, if you need to. So those guys are probably going to be some of our um, major changes that we're going to see to version 12. Um, I'm excited about version 12. There's quite a lot of things on the horizon for it. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and get it debuted to you and then um, also start kind of diving into all of the individual uh, features. So uh, I'm trying to remember which one we were going to highlight first, and I don't remember. I apologize for that, I don't remember. But um, I will get that sent out, of course, and we're going to hopefully get us an agenda for several of our next upcoming office hour sessions, hopefully get that sent out to everyone uh, pretty soon as well. So I'm going to go ahead, throw up my thank you slide, but I'm going to go ahead and um, turn the floor back over to you guys and see if you have absolutely any questions. Um, they can be Totoro related um, as far as your customizations or any core stuff. 
It does not have to be related to the topic we talked about today. Um, but thanks for giving me a minute to, to tell you about Totoro 12 and over to you. If you have any questions, feel free to type those in the question box. Um, or if you need a microphone, just say, hey, this would be easier to talk it out. So I'd be glad to give you a mic as well.